वेलकम टू मेन स्ट्रीम विद हरप्रीत सिंह तूर आप सब को प्यार भरी सत श्रीकाल नमस्कार आदाब एंड शलोम लाइक आई ऑलवेज से यू कैन गेट इन टच विद मी सेंड मी एन ई मेल ऑन एच एस टूर एट जी मेल डॉट कॉम और यू कैन ऑलवेज रीच एस आउट गिव ए कॉल एंड यू कैन पुट अप योर क्वेश्चन इवन ऑन सोशल मीडिया विच यू नो आई ऑलवेज चेक एंड गेट इन टच विद एवरी थिंग सो लेट एस फर्स्ट स्टार्ट विद Thursday night's debate, which took place between uh, the current sitting president and the former president uh, Donald Trump. Yes, the performance of uh, the uh, sitting president Joe Biden it was way way below par. Uh, there are lot of things going on. Lot of newspapers are suggesting their own things, including New York Times, which actually is suggesting. in the editorial page that the current president the sitting president joe biden will serve who has always served the country and put the country before everything else it will be good if he withdraws from the presidential race that is something which actually um editorial board wrote now for me there are couple of things which uh, i always look at it first of all with all due respect i beg to differ with them on that uh, i'll give you two reasons for that one i still have to see same editorial board saying at any point at any point board not just one person or a news where they said that the trump is not a fit to be the president even before he got elected in 2016 and even during his term and now since then after when he is openly saying that he is going to rule as a dictator and as a retribution for those people who do not understand retribution what it means it means you stepped on my toes and i'm coming after you and now with the supreme court ruling it has given more authority to the president the sitting president uh, we are going to talk about that also but let us stay where i'm say, uh, staying uh, talking about <laughs> number 2 the people who pay attention if they do there was a time some time back where new york times actually you know endorsed a candidate for the new york city council seat who was a south asian and he got the minimum number of votes in the race still new york times endorsed him why just because they wanted to establish oh, we are liberal we are forward looking this and that no when you are in the media you should be doing the things based on some facts and justify look at those facts not just which will get you the more hits which is actually counted these days what news or what uh, headline will get the the immediate attention and get the hit and this is how all these newspapers actually uh put their uh news on the online so that they can get the maximum hits and then they can go out to the advertisers and say that okay i got these number of hits and uh, our uh, newspaper so our rates for advertising is x amount now this is where the news media has compromised everything whether it is left side or the right side that they have literally compromised the news as a news wall street journal fox news newsmax all those they are blindly following what the trump is saying and the other ones are blindly following or they are trying to put up a persona of trying to be that we are more balanced or to the left but they are not because the news has nothing to do with either left or right the news is you put out the facts out there and let the people decide let you who are the viewers decide what they want but here these are the people sitting behind the cameras and i'm sorry in front of the cameras who are being told by the people who are behind the cameras that okay this is what you have to say and this is not how the news should be 
And that's where I have that issue with all these um, uh, people and the newsmakers and the media. And that's why when I say that I try to be, you know, when I'm sitting here, I will give you the right information that you guys decide. I do my best to bring it up and bring it up. Now the question comes in, uh, the second question which actually arise, uh, arose after the debate that how and when Joe Biden will step down. Even the Speaker of the House, uh, Mike Johnson, you know, he asked to put in, uh, you know, come out with the 25th Amendment to remove the president. Even if, even though I don't agree with him, even if let us say that let us assume to take it on the face value. President Trump was found to be incapable during his first year and throughout his uh, remainder of his years as a president, nobody talked about it on Republican side. Why now? President Trump is openly saying that he will, you know, shoot, he openly said that he can shoot the person on Fifth Avenue and get elected, which he proved he is capable of, and he did that. And now by appointing those three uh, justices and getting this latest immunity in his favor, even though there is, there is a lot to be decided, nitty gritty stuff within that, but he got a broader immunity. And because of that broader immunity, <clears throat> Even his acts before he became the president, he is saying he's not uh, liable for those acts, which was actually the Stormy Daniel issue also, which he got convicted for 34 counts. He threatened the just judges, he threatened the attorneys, he threatened the um, you know uh, the you know <clears throat> when the case was going on everybody, including the jury, he, his followers openly threatened that. But nobody's talking about that. Then on the justices, we have Clarence Thomas, who the Supreme Court last year got 4.2 million, these judges, as a gift. And Clarence Thomas was the biggest receiver of that. And Ginny Thomas was the one who actually was actively, actively supporting January 6th rising, uprising and attack on uh, the Capitol Hill. Now, first they threw out that uh, law uh, that uh, they, uh, which was brought actually by the prosecution, by the Attorney General's office to have those people accountable. Supreme Court threw that out. Now they have threw out everything else probably for whichever Donald Trump tried to do. And just imagine, you know, this is, this is something, you know, which uh, creates the dictators. And America definitely is walking towards that slowly, but surely one step at a time. President Trump openly is saying that he will do everything, including withdrawing support from NATO to Ukraine, which uh, President Putin always wanted. That's the one side. On the other side, as far as Joe Biden is concerned, I was very disappointed with the performance also. But, but at the same time, what I'm saying here is the President Joe Biden, he has to prove to the public that he is up to it and he can do it and he will be able to do it for the next four years. I uh, give an example of uh, the chief minister uh, in West Bengal. He was from uh, CPM and uh, he was a chief minister five times. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry for that. And he decided not to become the chief minister again when he was in his 90s. Yeah, there are people who can, you know, lo start losing their mind in early 60s, 70s, 80s, 
Trump is not young. Trump is not like 45, 50 years old, and Joe Biden is like 82. Trump is right behind him, but nobody's talking about Trump's age. He used his uh, um, uh, doctor to hide his uh, health issues. He refused to accept that he got COVID. He got the best treatment. And when he said that he got treated for COVID, his followers immediately were up in arms. And after that, he never said that. You know, so we have to look at two factors here. One, yes, Joe Biden delivered a lot. He actually delivered more than anybody else uh, has done in the last 70 years so far. So he has to prove that he is capable of. Number two, for the Trump, he needs to be exposed more and the people need to open up their eyes. And yes, uh, we were talking about uh, the fitness of uh, the next incoming president. The issue is definitely about democratic values, democratic setup, and one is openly saying that he is not going to abide by the values of Democrats, and the Republican Party had follow him, uh, followed him blindly and telling that, okay, that's fine, whatever he does, that's fine. So that is one thing. The other thing, of course, is that when we look at uh, the appointments to the Supreme Court, those people who have been watching my show before American Vision, uh, Vision and now Mainstream, I have always said that the Supreme Court actually is the one which holds so much power in this country. George W. Bush became the president because Supreme Court's one vote, not because at that time Al Gore lost the election. It was because Supreme Court had five appointments, five nominees from the Republican, and all those five actually gave the presidentship to George W. Bush by stopping the, uh, the process, democratic process, in its wheels. Now, by appointing three uh, justices, thanks to Mitch McConnell also, who actually <clears throat> was instrumental in getting it done, at least two of them, he was totally in cahoot with the Republican thinking and everything. And a God appointed three of them during the President Trump's uh, tenure. And Trump openly said that I have justices in my favor. And they are literally delivering what Republicans wanted. You know, uh, Justice Breyer, who actually retired, he wrote a book also. He was also appointed by Republicans. But once he became the one of the justices in the Supreme Court, <clears throat> in that book he mentioned that I started looking at how to move forward, not looking back. You know, it is like fundamentalists uh, are always like, oh, Constitution says this. Originally, Constitution never gave the power to the women to vote. So why won't they do that? Because it doesn't suit them. But at the same time, they will take, pick and choose where, what can suit them and deliver the, on those. And this giving the power to the president uh, immunity that was one of the, I think, worst decision which actually could have taken place. There are main two reasons for that. Number one, that everything which was happening so far, everything which was taken uh, so far, is not there anymore. <laughs> Lower courts have to fight everything now again about everything, including the call which Trump made to bring it up again where? To the Supreme Court. So in other words, Supreme Court got the president under its feet, if I may say so. Because then Supreme Court will decide and tell the president, okay, you can do this, you cannot do that. 
there is no political process anymore. There is no laws being written to amend and make the life better. The country which always felt, and I myself also admit that, feel proud that this is a country of law abiding citizens with equal power, all of a sudden, the president is now not just a president democratically elected, but he has more than half the crown as a king. I would say like three quarters of the crown. The other one quarter which is left out by the Supreme Court, it will be decided down the road. And that is something <clears throat> which I don't like. Now, the other issue is, during 1980s, there was a law which Supreme Court at that time agreed to, it is called Chevron Law, where the President and the Congress had the power to regulate the industries. You know, regarding your water supplies, your smog in the air, uh, what pollutants uh, the business industrial industrialist can throw in the ground, on the ground, into the water. It was all at that, till this decision last week, under the president. Supreme Court kicked it out. So next time when the president comes in, in case Trump comes in, or any Democratic president, they can literally abuse that uh, they have no authority, and industrialists, they will abuse it. There was a bribery case also, <clears throat> which actually was openly proved a quid pro quo. A businessman gave the money, and later on he got what he wanted from the person to whom he gave the, gave the money. On the understanding that you will provide me this thing. Supreme Court actually let the person go free. <clears throat> Even though he was convicted, he also spent some time uh, behind the bars, but Supreme Court threw that uh, law out, which means literally a sitting president can call anybody and tell him that, okay, you know what? You want a pardon? Give me $5 million. You want that kind of business? I will order that you will be the only supplier of such and such amount to the US Army, but give me a billion dollar, and it will be acceptable. This is what, you know, when uh, Supreme Court originally gave the power to the corporations, that the corporations can, can independently push the candidates for their benefits, just like a human being. That changed the whole scenario and the races became so expensive. Upstate, a sitting congressman just lost a race. More than $4 million were spent more than $4 million were spent on that race by the interest groups, the most expensive race ever for the Congress to ever take place. And all that money was from outside sources. Why? Because the sitting congressman happens to differ with one politically and financially strong group. And that political and financial group decided to throw their weight and money behind this person, the other person, and they succeeded. One of the squad member, like they call it, he lost. So, <clears throat> what is happening here? It is baffling to me also, even though I try to keep myself abreast of what's going on, how it is happening, everything. But, at the same time, what is happening is totally confusing to majority of the people. The immunity 
judgment is close to 200 pages long. I didn't get the time to read, even glance through it, but I have saved it for later on sometime, you know, whenever I get the time to read it. But how it is going to affect everything is now litigable. You can go to the court, file the case. If you have the money or you have the group, money group uh, backing you up, you go up and up and up, all the way up to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court then decides. Remember that case from Utah where this uh, person who uh, makes the cake, that went all the way to Supreme Court. Uh, it was only paper trail. There was not a single person who actually went to that bakery for that to make the cake. The bakery on its own created that phantom letter and all the way up and got a judgment from the Supreme Court. So those are the things which actually are worrisome, which we need to take a look at and we need to understand. So we are talking about what happens, what's going on. Let us uh, <clears throat> further look into it, okay? Uh, we have actually three branches, executive, Congress, and judicial. Within Congress, when we talk about it, that is the House of Representatives and U.S. Senate, okay? And I'm pretty sure that come this November, the House will be captured by the Democrats. I'm pretty sure about it. We will see on November 6th, or the night of November 5th what happens, but that's what I'm thinking. As far as the Senate is concerned, there is a 50-50 chance that the Democrats may retain it, even though there are more Democrat in incumbents who are up for re-election as compared to Republicans. And some of them are actually in the so-called red states. So we will see that. Now coming to the president, Again, it boils down to what happened, a lot of things, you know, because we as the people, we have so much used to instant of everything. We want instant coffee, instant tea, uh, Instagram, Snapchat, you know, food right now, order it, delivered. That's, and mindset is that now. So long-term thinking is not there for many of the people. And young generation actually is not that much actively into it. And on top of everything, what happened with the Ukraine war and everything, inflation is not helping either. <clears throat> Let me make one thing clear here. I'm not trying to protect or project somebody, but I'm putting the facts out here. Ukraine war, how it has destabilized actually an understood uh, way that the nation's country's borders should not be touched. But here, Russia, who guaranteed Ukraine that its territory and its border will be sacrosanct and will not be touched, attacked. And now part of Ukraine is occupied by Russia. And this is already third year of the war. And the summer is around the corner, summer is here. And uh, there are going to be more actually, uh, you know, bloodbath on the battlefield. But in the meantime, <clears throat> the rest of the world is paying extra prices for everything because everything contains either the wheat or the oil to cook. And Ukraine was one of the uh, top most exporter of both uh, the sunflower oil and the wheat. So having said that, now it comes down to the general public, you and me, how we think, how we work. Yes, there is no doubt about it that the President Trump is an existential threat to American democracy 
and also to the Europe because he has openly said that he is going to pull out of NATO. We should not forget that the NATO actually was created to prevent another world war. We are close to the world war, no doubt about it, but there definitely will be a world war if America pulls out. America is a balance against Russia, then China is rising. And in international politics, nobody is permanent friend. China may, you know, <clears throat> end up gobbling some part of Russia also because Russia and China, they also have some territorial disputes. So based on China providing some assistance, substantial assistance to Russia can do that. China and North Korea. North Korea is developing nuclear weapon and China doesn't like it. But now North Korea and Russia, they signed a French treaty where either country, if is attacked, the other will come to its defense. That's the treaty basically based on the 1970 treaty between India and Russia. Those people who are um, not, who may not be aware of it, they need to look into it, that what kind of treaty it was and what happened. <clears throat> now, all these, you know, those piadas like they say on the chessboard, the soldiers on the chessboard, every other country is a soldier except there is one king on each side and they decide what moves to make and how. And that is the issue which needs to be looked at. And if Congress is a Democrat and Senate is Democrat, yes, the elected president, in case Trump becomes the president, will definitely have a lot of leverage, but not to the extent which people think. Nobody's talking about how many cabinet ministers either he fired or resigned because of his uh, behavior and the way he works. I'm talking about the President Trump. So, and on this side, Jill Biden is a target for a lot of people from day one. Why, I have no idea but she definitely is not looked and respected as, uh, I would say, uh, you know, Michelle Obama or uh, George W. Bush's wife or Barbara Bush for senior Bush or Nancy Reagan. And Hillary Clinton was definitely not one of, in that category. I think one of the reason was again, because she is so smart which I admit that she's smart, even though personally, she was not my favorite candidate, but she's really smart. America is not ready for a female president, and it still is not. And you know, when sometimes the conversations goes on, you know, Kamala Harris will take over as the president, I don't believe it. I personally don't because America is not ready for a female president, number one, number two, a president of color. Where we are sitting today, the whole situation was exaggerated, not exaggerated, actually was a result of uh, uh, Barack Obama becoming the president, the first African American to become the president of the United States. We probably will not see any other person of color to be the president of the United States, at least in my lifetime, I doubt it even though I'm one of those guys who always tell the kids that they need to dream about being right there in the White House, sitting in the Oval Office. So having said that, <clears throat> that's the situation on political side on American politics. Now we also need to discuss, like I always say, you know, some international politics, uh, which I will start with the Indian politics. Uh, parliament opened up. And uh, yes, Rahul Gandhi gave a big speech 
uh, he spoke for about 90 minutes. He was interrupted by uh, twice by Prime Minister Modi and uh, his ministers, including Amit Shah. The question is, after the closing of all the remarks, when the Prime Minister Modi got up, he still treated Raho Gandhi as a papu, as a kid. You know, I always say this thing, that once you are sitting in that office, doesn't matter who voted for you and who did not vote for you, you should treat everybody equally. But it was very clear from the very beginning when he took over, even when he was the chief minister of Gujarat, that he does not like Muslims at all. And he openly campaigned against them throughout this time. So much so that Bhagwat actually had to say that the rhetoric during the election was not acceptable. So we were talking about the elections in India, okay? Let us uh, do some math here. Prime Minister Modi became the Prime Minister for the third time. Congratulations to him for achieving that, okay? It, it should be a proud moment for the BJP as well as NDA that they are there. Two things, one, in the first and second term, even though there were partners of NDA, but nobody was consulted and nobody actually was heard or anything. And BJP actually rolled over everything, whatever they wanted. Now, it's not going to be like that because they are only 240. They do not have the majority right now. Then the first uh, 2014, they got about 283. Second time in 2019, they got about uh, 303. Now they are only 240 and they need 273. Number two, which is statistical detail. BJP got 37% votes. And I talk about it all the time. 30% of which votes he, uh, BJP got? The 35% uh, 7% of the casted votes. Average vote is about 60 point something, you know, or 61% overall, the votes casted in India. And out of that, they got about 37% or maybe less than that. Now the question comes in. Minority is ruling majority. And at one point, you know, I do not have exact quote with me right now, uh, but Pluto at one point said that in democracy, those people who do not vote, they should be get ready to vote for uh, uh, being ruled by uh, the people who are not uh, that much intelligent. So when we talk about that, when we look at that, you know, yes, here is the quote. One of the penalties for refusing to participate in politics is that you end up being governed by your inferiors. And it was by Plato, which is so true that the people who refuse to go out and vote, this is what happens. And the reason I'm saying this is because Amer Indian elections are over. Now we are into American elections and we have such a huge Indian diaspora in this country that those people within India, we are lethargic to go out and vote. But at the same time, we want our issues to be looked at. We want our things to be looked at. So they need to read into it, listen to it, look into it and they need to get up and vote. For me, I don't mind who you wait for, vote for. I generally say I don't care. It's not that I don't care, I do care. But who you vote for is a different issue. Voting is most important aspect in any democracy. And there are elections for some state assemblies, state senates, 
uh, the whole U.S. Congress and then uh, U.S. Senate, some of them, and the President of the United States, and some local uh, elections also. So we need to get out. We need to get up and vote so that our voice is heard. So going back to that, you know, 37%, 36%, whatever it is, just think about it. If in America, which is about 55, 56, maybe 60% people, they vote, we end up voting based on the population. I think uh, we are at about 2% of the South Asians, maybe give or take a little bit more than that. If we end up going out and voting, you have such a big voice then. Right now, we are the top earners income wise. We have the uh, CEOs of the big companies, Google, Microsoft, you know, uh, World Bank, uh, some other companies also, the big, big companies, their CEOs are all of Indian origin or they are from Asia. So we already have that. People already know that. So if we start voting also, besides giving the money, which is also one of the factors which we have, that we give out so much money as contributions for electoral process without asking anything in return. It's a known within political circles that we can have a much bigger clout. We need to have, like they say here in uh, English, you know, bang for your buck. To have that, you guys who are watching this show, they need to get up and they need to go out and vote. Number two, we have to start communicating with your local electors. We don't. Only a few people do. They are hesitant because we still have the mindset from back home where electors have all these gunmen around them. Can you imagine that uh, a congressman here walking, driving his or her own car going to an event, getting out of the car without a single cop? And in India, what we have? We have the whole ring of the police, even for MLA. Over here, they just go around for council members. Why they need uh, so much protection over there, not here. So what I'm trying to say here is, these are the things which we need to look at. We, over here, the reason I'm mentioning this is that these elected officials are available to you as and when you want them, <clears throat> as compared to India. Nobody is here to stop you from reaching out to them and asking a question. If they are walking on the street, you come across, you recognize them, you have the right to stop him and ask a question. If he is in a hurry, you can walk with him or her and ask a question. Or you can go to the office and you can talk about it. This is the beauty of American democracy. And that is what I'm afraid of, what would happen on November 5th or after that based on what happened last Thursday. You know, all these, um, in 1968, Lyndon B. Johnson actually, uh, who was the sitting president at that time, he made a speech from Oval Office where he announced that he will not be running to be the president. And guess what happened after that? We got Richard Nixon. And Richard Nixon, what he did, we know that. And Trump is going beyond what Richard Nixon did. So again, for me, that's another issue which I'm looking at. Again, I'm not happy with what Joe Biden did on Thursday. But at the same time, unless and until he proves that he's capable of doing it, there is going to be a problem, not just for the Democratic Party, but as a country, America, where America is and where America stands. 
you know, when um, uh, you go out to other countries and you look at uh, uh, some of the things um, uh, which uh, uh, other countries look at, the way they look at America, we need to appreciate that. We are part and parcel of this country where we have so much, we have so much at stake in this election. We need to get up, wake up, and there's nothing wrong. If you don't want Biden to be the next president and you are a Democrat, pick up the phone, call your congressman and tell, let them know what you are thinking, what your issues are. Let that congressman address your issues, address your concerns, so that you can then decide based on that who you are going to vote for and what will be good for the country. Those are the issues. Those are the questions which we as individuals, as a registered voters, we need to look at if we dream about big, big things for the future of America, then we also have responsibilities as a citizens and as a registered voters to go out and vote and take care of that business for our future, for the kid, uh, future of our kids. With that note, good night and good luck.